All right, so just a quick uh, rundown of our lab environment today. Um, and before we start that, I just wanted to say I, I actually have no affiliation with Pentester Lab. Um, I have no affiliation with Kali Linux. I have no affiliation with um, the blogs that I use as a reference for this. Uh, and I will give credit to all of those in the description of the video. I just didn't see a video on this that uh, was quite as clear as I would have wanted. So. Uh, for other people that are looking for this information, I decided to make a video of my own, and uh, hopefully it's helpful to at least a couple of you guys, uh, because you know I, I enjoy seeing videos where someone kind of does a step through, uh, step by step of the process of, of a specific tutorial. So that's essentially what my uh, what my goal is here. So uh, without further ado, we have the Pentester Lab virtual machine. Uh, I downloaded the ISO from their website under the Shell Shock section, and of course I have my Kali Linux VM. Uh, and I downloaded that from the Kali website. I believe it's Kali.org. Um, so basically what, what we did here is just, I have a clean slate VM with nothing installed on it. I just booted, uh, did a live boot from the Pentester Lab ISO and it does all the heavy lifting for you. You don't have to configure the web server or anything. It's ready to go out of the box. The one thing you need to do is verify that your network settings are correct. And the best way to do that in VirtualBox is to simply set your uh, NIC in bridged mode. And I did that. And so all we need to do now is find the IP address. And of course that is 192.168.1.14. So what we're gonna do is open up Burp Suite on our attacker VM here running Kali Linux. And we're gonna make sure that intercept is off. We do not need that function for this tutorial. We do, however, wanna see what that vulnerable web server is hosting. So we're gonna navigate to it in our web browser and as you can see it's a simple splash page here uh, and since we have burp suite open and we have our web browser configured in a way that will uh, grab our http history we can see the git requests uh, made to our vulnerable web server and one of which is a cgi-bin slash status and we're going to go ahead and use that to begin our exploit and ultimately complete our exploit so we're going to send this get request to the repeater function of Burp Suite. Uh, and as you can see, it does a get request on the CGI bin slash status uh, on the host. Of course, that's the IP address of the vulnerable web server. And it sends this user, user agent string, which of course is a legitimate user agent string from the Ice Weasel web browser. But we're going to go ahead and get rid of that because we're going to try and get this thing to execute some code. That is the point of Shellshock. Uh, as it as it is so we're gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it right into the user agent and essentially what we're gonna try and do is uh, open up bash essentially and uh, and run this command echo vulnerable which will just echo the word vulnerable uh, if it is able to execute code on that vulnerable web server so as you can see we got an error um, and essentially what that tells you is that it did not execute this code. So instead of giving up and saying, hey, this thing isn't vulnerable, we're going to go ahead and try a different command. Um, I would love to see the contents of Etsy password. If I'm doing a pen test, it would be great to know all the users on a specific machine, uh, usernames to target, you know, for, for various other things uh, in the enumeration process. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try and get this thing to probably need a cat in there. So I'm gonna try and get this thing to dump the contents of Etsy password, and I'm gonna go ahead and send that get request once more. And look at that, another error. Um, but now I kind of have another idea on something that I might be able to try. I'm gonna go ahead and do a ping and uh, set the count to three, and I'm going to do that against my attacker PC. So I need to know the IP address of my attacker PC. I have config eight zero tells me that the IP address is 192.168.1.13. So I'm going to execute the ping dash C against 192.168.1.13. And we're going to execute that get request once more. So I didn't get an error. I actually got the results of a ping. Um, so that's exactly what I want to see. Now, if I want to verify this even more, I can go ahead and listen for ICMP traffic uh, on my interface uh, ETH0 by use of the TCP dump command. 
Uh, and let's go ahead and type that command in, tcp dump dash i icmp. So now we are listening to uh, eth0 for icmp traffic, and we're going to go ahead and do this get request once more, the exact same command. And look at that, tcp dump is actually seeing that ICMP traffic. Um, you see the request and the reply, so you have six entries in tcp dump. That tells us everything that we need to know. We have successfully executed a command uh, on the vulnerable web server. So ping is cool and all, but we're going to go ahead and try something a bit more malicious. Um, we're going to go ahead and leave the ping there, though, because we know that that will execute successfully, and we'll go ahead and add something a bit more interesting at the end. Again, we wanted to dump the contents of slash etsy slash password. We'll go ahead and add that and submit that get request. And would you look at that, we get the contents of slash etsy slash password. And have a, kind of a contemplate what else we could do. So we have the contents of etsy password. We know all the uh, users on the system. And let's go ahead and see if we can't get a shell going because that would be a lot more entertaining than just listing uh, information. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, assume that Netcat is installed on this box and in the wild this is probably not the case but since this is a virtual machine set up by Pentester Lab they have generously configured this for us so we can just go ahead uh, and do a, uh, a Netcat command on the actual user agent and we will format that as such. So this is going to uh, be over port 9999, as you see, and it's going to essentially allow us to pipe commands to slash bin slash sh uh, and thus have a shell. So we're going to send this get request and it's not really, it's just kind of hanging out uh, because it is waiting for inbound connections on port 9999. And then once that inbound connection happens, we'll be able to pipe commands to slash bin slash sh. So on our attacker VM, we'll go ahead and do nc on the uh, vulnerable web server's IP over port 9999. And we didn't get any errors, so we'll go ahead and just initiate a command. The first one being who am I? And look at that. I am a user on that was listed in the slash etsy slash password dump that we did earlier um, so knowing of course thanks to the the uh, people who configured the pen tester lab vm that i can sudo dash s to get root access of course i want root access i'm going to sudo dash s and i'll do another who am i and look at that i am root um, so that's you know essentially the whole point of this uh, is to be able to elevate to root privileges um, we're going to go ahead and kill this, and we're going to take a couple steps back. Uh, in an actual pen test, there's probably going to be a firewall prohibiting random connections over some random port, especially you know uh, something that's not being used. Of course, you would you would hope, you really would hope. Um, but you know, a web server is going to have a couple of ports that uh, are probably going to be open at the firewall. Um, and those are going to be necessary, you know, depending on what kind of traffic uh, you would be expecting on that web server. So 443 is a common one that would be open at the firewall. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and try a, a reverse shell. So we're going to essentially uh, remove this and we are going to listen for inbound connections on our attacker VM. And we're going to do that on port 443. So we're going to go ahead and do an NC, and we're going to listen uh, on port 443. So now uh, we're listening for inbound connections on port 443, and uh, we're going to format our get, re get request in a manner that uh, attempts to connect to our attacker uh, VM over port 443. So the command for that is formatted as such. And we'll go ahead and execute that get request. And we'll head back over to our terminal window. And as you can see, that connection was successful. So of course we start with the who am I. We see that we are the pen tester lab user once more. We will do a sudo dash s and who am I. We see that we're root. 
Now we'll echo yay because we're root. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to cd to the root directory and we're going to list everything that's there. Uh, that's neat. We're going to uh, go ahead and cd to temp, list what's there, and now we're going to go ahead and create a file called pwned in temp. Why not? And now we're going to go back to temp and list the contents. And look at that. You see a file called pwned. So as you can imagine with root privileges on this box through the um, awesome reverse shell that we now have, we can do a lot of fun stuff, but we're just going to be, uh, we're going to be real malicious and just, we're going to, we're going to shut this thing down, right? So I am just going to do a pseudo power off. And would you look at that? Our VM is shutting down. So our vulnerable web server, uh, we were able to initiate a reverse shell. Um, and we were able to elevate to root privileges and deny all service to all users trying to access that web server. So now, of course, in my web browser, if I try and navigate to that IP address, look at that. Spinning wheel of death, and this thing will time out because that web server is no longer on. So guys, I just wanted to reiterate kind of what we did. Uh, we exploited the shell shock vulnerability. Um, we did a bit of enumeration to kind of see what we could and could not execute. Once we had an idea of what we could, uh, we kind of modified our uh, exploit code in a way that would allow us to do more and more each time. Uh, we were able to take advantage of this vulnerability and ultimately uh, do a denial of service uh, for anyone trying to access that web server. So. Um, Again, I, I really just want to thank all the, the people who contributed to the information out there that I used to do this lab. It was very help or, helpful for me. Uh, I just really wanted to do a video um, using that information, and I really hope that uh, hopefully it was uh, helpful to at least a couple of you guys. So if you have any comments or questions, be sure to add them, uh, and I'd be glad to uh, respond to those. So thanks for watching, guys.